So, Ben, with uh, Dowd Milan in the form that he's in and mm. Joss Butler in the form that he's in at the top of the order, with Ben Stokes and Jason Roy to return, what will England's top seven look like for the T20 World Cup, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, v- very good question. D- so, Dowd Milan has been a bit of a contentious pick in recent times. I think he plays. Uh, he s- starts a bit slowly, but I think that that's fine considering the extent to which he catch up, catches up and how consistently he catches up. Joss Butler plays, I think, will open. Uh, he, just, he just has that ability to control games and you want your best player to face as many balls as possible. I think he will probably just play all seven of those batsmen and have Stokes and Moeen as your fifth bowler, which is probably fine. If they do try and go for a, a proper finisher, either a Sam Billings down at number seven or uh, a Sam Curran or a David Willey, I think Jason Roy is probably the most unlikely to make the cut. I think Bairstow... He's been a bit out of nick, but is brilliant against spin and has been brilliant in the IPL, which will stand him in good stead. I think the other thing we might see as well as England having less of a batting order and more of like a floating role sort of thing. So if one of the openers falls early, then whoever the number three is out of Bairstow, Roy and Butler will come in and try and make use of the fat power play. If someone falls between over six and ten, Milan will come in, be able to build a platform. Stokes can do the same sort of role. If someone falls the first ball of an over bowl by a spinner, Moeen, who's brilliant against spin, can come in and try mm. and smash it. And then maybe even that floating opener, if they're not used at the beginning, can kind of come later in it, later on and be a finisher. I think it's, it's a, yeah, it's fascinating to talk about T20 cricket in a, in a way that hasn't been for, for quite a long time. And mm. England have so many options that it's just a very good problem to have, isn't it? But could you end up uh, being in a position where you're using players in roles where they haven't really performed well in before, not really had the opportunity to perform well in. So, for example, Milan's on so well at three. Could you end up using him at four where he comes in with slightly different game scenario or then, as you said, using one of those openers in a in a floating role that they haven't really had to do before? Yeah, that is possible. And I think people, uh, th- I think the main risk of that is actually Stokes. If Stokes is down at five, even, people think of him as this destructive player, which he is, but only really when he gets set, he's, he struggles to hit it from ball one. And that you could see a scenario where he's asked to do that. And I think that would be a mistake. But I think Morgan is canny enough that he will, even if players have to adapt a little bit, that they're still coming in in situations that is good for them, even if it's not exactly the role that they've played for their counties or for England before, I guess. And then hopefully Moeen is a kind of spin specialist, spin destroying specialist. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I think you can go too far with this sort of thing and just pigeonhole players. I mean, Moen is a lot better against spin than against pace. Yes. But it's not as if he's going to get out every ball he faces against mm. pace. He's going to smash every ball he faces against a spinner for six. I mean, once he gets in, he can do everything to everything. And we saw in South Africa this year, got that, what, 13 on of 11 and he was smashing pace and spin alike. He could yet be the, the finisher England are after, I think. Um, but but yeah, I mean, spin is, is his strength and England will want to make best use of that. And in India, that could be absolutely crucial.